Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us for another look at the papers on a program we'll call Off the Press. We take a look at the headlines with the help of our guest and then we try to unravel what is behind them. I have uh, today Public Affairs Analyst Bolaho Olujede. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. We'll start with the Punch newspaper. Uh, the big one here is 50% of Kanu 979 strained deaths caused by coronavirus, says federal government. That's it on your screen. Uh, it has two riders. COVID-19 pandemic just beginning in Nigeria, declares uh, PTF. Um, we have other headlines here. But Let's take that big one. You, you know that issue was, uh, you know, quite controversial when it came up. The debts being recorded and the government, the state government denying over and over again that the de debts were related to COVID-19. What, what's your reaction to this confirmation by the federal government? Who we are saying that, I mean, over 50% of COVID-19 cases. Do you expect there is more that were not um, known? I, I, I think it, it, it was, uh, it's a very important situation. Um, and, and it's um, an indictment on leadership. I, I have contacts in uh, Kano, and I remember speaking with a couple of uh, medics in, in Kano at that time. And they were very firm that it was a disaster. You know, people, people um, were not conscious or did not take necessary precautionary measures about COVID. They not only contacted COVID, they took it home and they went to the suburb and the villages and to the elders. <clears throat> and the elders caught it and died in, in, in unreasonable numbers or avoidable numbers. Uh, that, that was the reality about, about the candle thing. And it's quite unfortunate. Okay, now let's see other headlines. Uh, we'll also take a look at the writers to that story in a bit, but let's uh, take a look at other headlines. The other one here at the top of the paper, you have COVID-19 loans will be disbursed 48 hours after approval. That's the CBN. you find details on page 22. Then we have the Taraba killings. Outrage as Malami spares Ami mastermind other soldiers' trial. Um, I was watching, um, I was reading rather, um, an opinion piece on this matter by some lawyers, and they were talking um, that there is every likelihood that the uh, soldiers might be facing a court martial. Shouldn't the um, AGF office have been a bit more explicit with the reasons why these people are being exempted, aside from saying it's a bureaucracy? It, it, it goes to the root of a uh, uh, transparency problem that we have as a nation. Um, things that have to do with justice, court martial, and, and all that stuff, I, I believe should be put on the table. Ni Nigerians need to know, though, uh, court martial most of the time are, are certainly uh, military affairs. Uh, but at the same time, um, whatever the offenses of these guys are, the, the, the transparency of the process and, and the eventual sanctions, I, I think is something that maybe the civil organization should help to pursue the government and hold to account to be sure that people are not just being uh, uh, unduly uh, punished on that that. Uh, court martial system, which is a little bit uh, uh, not as open as our court system. Okay, uh, there are other headlines. Doctors to begin a nationwide strike next week. We also have at the bottom of the paper, um, FD declares Friday, June 12, Democracy Day, a holiday. Uh, details is on page 29. I mean, that actually covers it. It's a public holiday for loads of people. A sergeant kills inspector over gate closure in Lagos. Nigerian returnees to pay for their airfares accommodation. The federal government is reiterating that. Um, father of three jailed for duping America ladies, American ladies. Assembly to summon fire she over equity finances. Akere Dolu supporters accuse aspirants of doctoring register. Uh, those are some of the uh, headlines. I want to take you up on the two writers to the first story on the Punch newspaper um, on the 50% of COVID-19 cases um, as what we know for the Kanu strained deaths. Underneath it, it has two writers. COVID-19 pandemic just beginning in Nigeria. 
And then uh, the, the NCDC also saying um, the high mobility of the Southeast um, should have, you know, churned out more cases of COVID-19. I want you to speak on both of them. Uh, are you worried? Are you scared when the PTF that should be helping control this is saying that it's just beginning? Uh, well, the, the PTF is talking from a point of knowledge. Um, they have information across, and they're able to tell you exactly what is going on about COVID. Um, I, I will use um, the, the Lagos environment as an example. Well, it's no more just Lagos. It's the national uh, uh, prevalence as well. You have a situation in which some months or, or some several weeks back, you get tested two times before you are discharged. They test you one time, you get the negative, then 48 hours after, they test you again. That was several weeks ago. After a while, they could not do that. So they test you once, and you're negative, and they discharge you. They take a sample for the second one, but they discharge you before the second test result even comes out. Then the third level now is that they don't even wait for any of those two tests. Once you have spent 14 days under treatment, they cut you loose. You are a discharge. They take your sample. When then the result comes out, eventually, I believe, they will communicate to you. What that is telling us is that the resources are getting overwhelmed. Those isolation and treatment centers are getting filled up. So we are running out of capacity. Admission is increasing. Though we are making uh, a lot of, uh, of discharges, people are getting, uh, people are recovering. But when you look at the fact that some weeks ago, we used to have spaces in those centers. Currently, there are no spaces. You have to wait till somebody is discharged before you absorb somebody else into the place. It should tell us something. The numbers are going up. The resources are, are, are getting constrained. And we must be worried about what is going on. So right. NC, NCDC knows what we're talking about. Let's hope that they will go beyond the talk and actually um, get the governors to do what is needed so we know um, what the true reality of infections are across the country. Let's move on to the nation newspaper now. Uh, government worried about breach of rules by churches, mosque. That's another one. Um, it has uh, some rider, two actually. Nigerians still at risk of coronavirus infection. Uh, you're also looking at 60% um, of the 90, 979 deaths um, in eight Kanu cancels COVID-19 related. Uh, we just talked about that a second ago. And then the big news yesterday that the Abia State Governor, uh, governor uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, but there's a different caption on the paper. He said, Abia Governor hands over to deputy uh, is now in isolation. And CNDDC senators you, Senator used 11 firms to get 3.6 billion jobs. No link with companies. Ex-U.S. director at AFDB backs Adeshina. The matter still continues. Uh, we're hoping that um, he holds on to his position there. Um, well, underneath the breakdown of figures, um, the global uh, figure of infection has now exceeded 7 million. And of that, we've had over 400,000 deaths, as uh, seen on the Nation newspaper this morning. There's a couple of writers to that story, but let's get um, Agulaho speaking on the big one and that uh, government's worry um, over the breach of rules by churches. Uh, what was your initial response when the federal government went ahead to ease this lockdown and now that they're expressing worry, what, what are you going to say to them? Uh, I, I think we took things a little bit uh, too much for granted. Um, Agreed. Churches, I mean, my, my, my sister is a pastor in Germany, and uh, Germany has opened churches. But when you think of a church in Germany with 20 congregation members, or, or 25, you cannot begin to compare what is going on in those spaces with what you're going to have in Nigeria. There are churches in Nigeria with auditorium for capacities in thousands. So my worry, my concern, I believe that this should be the concern of every Nigeria, is how this social distancing, how all the infection, infection control measures are going to be 
obeyed or enforced in all these mega churches. Even the smaller churches, they have a lot of people. We cannot just be importing wholesale what is going on in Europe into Nigeria. We must adapt it to our peculiar environment. I am sincerely concerned about how government will have the capacity to enforce the rules that will guide the, the opening up of churches and, and other places of worship. It's, it's, it's a source of worry, especially now that we, as we have been told by NCDC, uh, we, we cannot say this is a who yet. The numbers are going up. If the numbers are going up and we open up the churches without the uh, 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 effective, effective uh, means of enforcement, um, we, we, we have a challenge ahead. We have a major challenge ahead. All right, let's uh, see what the Nigerian Tribune newspaper has for us this morning. Schools reopening. FG meets Wayek, Neko, Naptip. Uh, details on page 2, 3, 5, and 30. A couple of riders. 60% of um, the Kanu mysterious deaths due to COVID-19. We've uh, had that already. Uh, reps demand reports on 83 billion Naira approved by presidency for the PTF. Also underneath that uh, caption, Abia Gov, NDDC workers test positive. Uh, Akere Dolu laments rapid rise in cases in Ondo. And then Edo records five new deaths. Um, it is souls of the departed rest in peace. All right, let's see what other headlines are here. Court of judge suit on Edo APC primaries till Thursday. Bolaho, what's your take on what's playing out in Edo State? Let's look at that one before we go to the school's reopening. Uh, we had a guest earlier uh, to talk about it, and uh, there was a lot of skepticism as to the security of those who will be participating in the primaries. Uh, primaries... The, if, I'm not sure that the, the means of the primary has been concluded. Is it direct or indirect now? Has, has that concluded? Well, there, there is still the faction of the Obaseki that is saying, insisting on indirect, while the national AP, um, um, chairman is saying that they're going to do uh, direct primaries. And INEC has taken the position of the APC national leader because constitutionally it says it is mandated to take, um, I mean, to correspond with the national leadership and not subunits. It's, it's, that's, that's, that's interesting, because I think we need to sort that out. Now, when you are providing security for a, a, an event like this, a primary, your plan is going to be different if you are adopting indirect from if you are adopting direct, because the crowd implications are totally different. When you're bringing all party members to come and vote, it's different from when you are having delegates to come and do the voting, the, 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 the primary. I am concerned about that. So let's hope that the, the uh, INEC, INEC is going along with the, with the national uh, 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 position. We still have the tension in the air in the Dota. There is still a very strong incumbency uh, 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 perspective, which is totally different from the national. And both are from Edo. How this will play out with minimum implication for security is, is left to be seen. I hope the, we can count on the Inspector General of, of Police and, and other security agencies to ensure that there will not be a, a problem for the ordinary citizen of Edo State and those who are going to participate both in the primary and the eventual voting in, in Edo. I, I it's, it's a single state anyway, so let's hope that works out better for, for that election. I share your hope. I hope they're watching and they're listening and they will do what is needed to protect people who want to elect their leaders. Uh, moving on now, we have this one on uh, George withdraws from suit. Infectious disease bill suffers a setback. That's um, another one for you. Uh, Justice Taiwo, we had it in our news earlier, um, has moved away from the bill, citing uh, poor media representation and um, other matters. Uh, what's your reaction to that? 
What, what, what news part was that? What Infectious disease bill suffers setback. Judge withdraws from suit. He has, the, the Justice Taiwo has handed the case back to uh, the chief judge to reassign it to another uh, judge. He is uh, citing uh, the fact that there was misrepresentation um, of the matter in the media and some other issues for withdrawing. Uh, that bill seems to just be causing a whole lot of controversy. Uh, well, the good thing is that it's still a bill. Um, it, it has not uh, gone beyond, I think, I think it went through second reading at some point. The bill is quite controversial, and um, that must have been what led to the people that went to court to challenge the entire, the entire process, and the fact that we're even considering it at all. What I found most embarrassing about that bill was when the uh, Director General of the NCDC said he wasn't aware of the bill. So it's like actually uh, giving someone a haircut in his absence. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand that. So there, there's so much about that bill. I, I don't see um, a future for that bill as is right now. It looks to me like something that would need to go back to the drawing table and get all the stakeholders involved. If the director general of the Center for Disease Control is not aware and has no impute, into a bill that has to do with disease control, the fundamentals are flawed right from the very beginning, up initial. So um, the, the, the uh, court case part of it is just one. Let's watch how that progresses. Well, apart from that, um, the, the stakeholders' engagement has been very poor, and I don't see how a bill like that can see the light. All right, let's see what The Guardian has for us in the time we have left. Uh, the big one here is illegal oil mining rips Nigeria off forex revenue. Uh, that's um, a screamer for you from The Guardian newspaper. A couple of writers, three. Uh, na nations gold dominates Dubai markets. That's uh, NMGS. How illegal mining paralyzes agricultural activities. Chinese engaging in illicit prize competition. That's according to MAN, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, I presume. And then we have, we are investing to dismantle Nigeria. IPOB wants presidency. Uh, members predict fresh manhunt. And so Hanese cautions FG on backlash. Uh, there are other stories on The Guardian. Doctors to begin nationwide strike June 15. Uh, Buhari nominates Dogban Nessen as uh, substantive appeals court president. Amid plots to debar Obasaki, court restrains APC INEC. Drunken police sergeant kills colleague in Lagos. I'll leave this one open for you, Balaha. Which of these headlines uh, picked your interest? Uh, it's quite unfortunate that doctors will be going on strike. Um, it, it should be of national concern. At this time, not that it's ever good for doctors to go on strike, but we are in the midst of a pandemic. And the cases are not abated. We cannot afford that doctor strike. So whatever needs to be done to meet them uh, uh, midway somehow and resolve the ground, um, we need to do those. We need to do those. And, and I'm sure this nationwide strike will not happen. Illegal oil mining, we're just paying lip service to that. Illegal oil mining has been there forever. We say it every year. We sit on it at the uh, at, uh, National Assembly. We talk about it in the newspapers, but nothing gets done. So it comes across as one of those issues that we just we just like to mouth. There are no genuine desire to do anything about illegal oil mining. That is my conclusion about illegal oil mining. I'm getting worried about the illegal uh, uh, gold and other minerals mining that are happening in Nigeria. So we we all knew what happened with the Zamfara gold oil mining and how that got intricately interwoven with banditry in that state. Now, Zamfara is not alone. I'm aware that in Oshu, there is a lot of mining going on, and in some other part of Nigeria as well. How come the relevant ministry is, does not appear to be paying enough attention to this matter? Are we leaving this to the hands of Chinese and, 
and private people without the necessary regulation and control? Uh, these are big questions for, for that particular ministry to, to answer. It keeps coming up, but it's becoming like another illegal mining matter that we all mouth and talk about, but nothing ever happens. Well, let's let's look forward to something uh, better. Uh, let's see what we can squeeze in from the business world, uh, from business day. Amid scarcity, millions of meters rot at Lagos port, over 35% levy. Neck increases meter costs to reflect Naira devaluation. Uh, that's it on your screen. At the top of the masthead, you see Nigeria's democracy hangs in the balance with infectious disease bill. Uh, Golahon just spoke on that a moment ago. Uh, let's see this insight on the business day. Uh, Ni World Bank projects Nigerian economy to shrink by 3.2% in 2020. Over to you, Bolaho. Yeah, well, uh, it, is, it is not much of a prediction that Nigeria's economy will shrink anyway. Uh, economies across the world are all gonna shrink in 2020. Uh, but what matters, uh, or why should that, this should be a major concern for us, is the fact that our uh, uh, safety net um, I, I, is not that robust. So the, the miners of the economy, the Minister of Finance, the CBN, uh, the FIRS, and the entire Economic Council in the country has to pay close attention to what is going on globally, but more importantly, in Nigeria, and see how we can... Uh, navigate this maze with minimum disruption to our lives. Already there are disruptions, but as much as possible so that we can minimize it. All the interventions that need to happen, we, we can be talking about giving loans, COVID loans, for, for months, and, and it might not happen. Those are not the kind of things that will help uh, a situation like this. We must be able to, <clears throat> to make the necessary adjustment that will placate the situation I make it softer on our people. Uh, your quick thoughts on the big one. Um, amid scarcity, millions of meters rot at Lagos port over 35% levy. Neck increases meter cost to reflect Naira devaluation. It's um, unbelievable that we've been shouting about meters for several months. And the meters are here. They're hanging at the port. Um, this, this, these are some of the inefficiency in Nigeria. Uh, this is a country where... People shout about electricity and we will import turbines and leave them at the port for years, five years. Turbines and some parts that were necessary for electricity were left at the Nigerian port. That's the kind of country we live in. Meters are things we've been shouting about. We need to clear these matters and get the people to have meters so that we can improve these uh, uh, distribution issues that we've been trying to solve for ages. There's devaluation. Anything that has an import end to it will start to take on the effect of that devaluation. Official Naira gain went from 306 to 360 about, about a month ago or, or thereabout. And we are going to have that effect on anything that is imported into this country. All right, Golaha Olojede, thank you so much for your time with us this morning. It's highly appreciated. It's my pleasure. Thank you. For have having. a lovely day. Bye. And that's a wrap on the newspaper review this morning. I hope you got an insight from the contribution of our guest. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow morning, same time, with a look at the headlines. Be well until then. My name is Felicity Izewiki.